human skeletal system. The human skeleton consists of 206 bones. And the skeleton has two main divisions. What are the main divisions? One is the axial skeleton, another is the appendicular skeleton. What is axial skeleton? All the bones which are present along the median longitudinal axis of the body collectively constitute the axial skeleton. Median longitudinal axis means basic central framework, the basic central framework of the body that is known as axial skeleton. So the axial skeleton is composed of the skull which is of 29 bones, vertebral column that constitutes 26 bones, sternum constitutes one bone, ribs constitute 24 bones. So this is the skull, this is the vertebral column, this is the sternum and these are the ribs. Skull, it is made up of 29 bones. So the skeleton of the head consists of two main regions. One is the cranium that is the topmost part and below the topmost part is present the face so these are the two main regions and on the lateral side the ear ossicles and the hyoid bone are present near the throat region. So the cranium which is known as the brain box it is made up of 8 bones whereas the face is made up of 14 bones, ear ossicles are of 6 bones. So what are the ear ossicles? Ear ossicles are known as the auditory ossicles these are located in the middle ear and the hyoid. Hyoid is the single bone and this is present in the throat and this is the only bone which is present in our body that does not form any kind of joint with any bone. This is the human skull. Look at here some important reasons. It is written here frontal bone. This is written here parietal bone. This is the occipital bone and this is the temporal bone. Remember this is the part of the cranium which is known as the brain box. It lodges the brain. So the brain consists of the four important lobes. What are the names of the lobes? One lobe is called as frontal lobe. This is called as parietal lobe. Here is present the occipital lobe and here is present the temporal lobe because these bones cover the lobes of the brain that's why the names of the lobes and the names of the bone are same so frontal lobe is present in the front part of the cranium parietal on the top occipital at the back and temporal lobe on the lateral side near the ear and find here it is written as mandible only movable bone in the human skull the rest all the bones are fixed to each other in such a way they cannot move and that's why the kind of joint is known as fixed joint vertebral column it is also known as backbone it is a part of the longitudinal axis of the skeleton and this vertebral column it forms 33 vertebrae but this at 33 vertebrae they are fused and they form 26 vertebrae how they are named differently let us see this is one vertebra which is a ring shaped vertebra like this there are 33 ring shaped vertebrae present in the vertebral column can you find here a an opening that is written as vertebral foramen. This is the neural canal. So this vertebral foramen which is known as the neural canal. What is its importance? It forms a canal like structure through which the spinal cord passes. And the vertebral column is divided into many parts based upon the location of the vertebral column that means the bones which are present in the particular region of the body so the bones or the vertebra are named accordingly first is the cervical vertebra these are located in the 
neck region and there how many number these are seven in number that mean there are seven cervical vertebrae second the vertebrae which are present in the thoracic part that means in the thorax means in the chest these are 12 in number next lumbar vertebrae these are five in number where these are located in the abdomen then below the abdomen the lower abdomen which is known as the pelvis so the sacral vertebrae are present in the pelvis region and the sacral vertebrae are fused because these are five in number but they are fused into one and that is known as sacrum whereas the lower part the lowest part of the vertebral column is known as coccygeal vertebrae which is form of four bones but all the four bones are fused into one bone it is located in the lower pelvis and remember at the center of the vertebral column is present the neural canal and through this neural canal passes the spinal cord sternum it is a dagger shaped bone what is the shape the shape is like this so this is the sternum where is it located it is located in the middle part of the front chest this is the thoracic part or the chest part and what is the function of the sternum it provides sight for the attachment of the ribs the ribs are curved bones those are attached on one side to the vertebral column and on the other side these are attached to the sternum the ribs are of three types based upon their attachment first is the true ribs second is the false ribs third the floating ribs so if there are 12 pairs of ribs they are divided as seven pairs three pairs and two pairs how they are divided the first seven pairs of ribs find out here the numbers are written 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 7 so the seven pairs of ribs are attached directly to the sternum they are directly attached to the sternum that's why they are called as true ribs next the false ribs are rib number 8 9 and 10 these are not directly attached to the sternum rather they are attached to the seventh pair of rib that's why they are called as false ribs and the last two pairs that means 11th and the 12th pair of ribs they are not at all attached to the sternum directly or indirectly and one part of the 11th pair and the 12th pair of ribs are attached to the vertebral column and the other part is found to be free that's why they are called as floating ribs what is rib cage all the ribs along with the sternum and the vertebral column form a cage like structure that is called as thoracic cage or thoracic basket this is known as rib cage and what is the importance of the rib cage the rib cage which is present in the chest region it houses the lungs and also the heart let's come to the appendicular skeleton what is appendicular skeleton bones that are attached to the axial skeleton constitute the appendicular skeleton bones that are attached to the axial skeleton attached to the axial skeleton means they are appended to the axial skeleton that means the bones like the girdle bones and the limb bones they form the appendicular skeleton because axial skeleton constitutes the skull the vertebral column the sternum 
and the ribs whereas appendicular skeleton that forms the girdles and the limb bones which are attached to the axial skeleton that's why the name is appendicular skeleton which is 126 in number how to classify the girdles the girdles are of two types the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle pectoral girdle consists of two kinds of bones one is the clavicle another is scapula pelvic girdle is composed of ilium ischium and pubis so the pectoral girdle is called as shoulder girdle because it is located in the shoulder part of the body whereas the pelvic girdle is known as hip girdle because it is present in the pelvis in the lower region of the body what is pectoral girdle the shoulder girdle which consists of two bones these are clavicle and scapula find out where is the clavicle located in this diagram the clavicle is known as the collar bone whereas the scapula is known as the shoulder blade this is the region of the pectoral girdle this is the scapula and this is the clavicle this is the triangular flattened bone which is the scapula and the collar bone is present here attached to the scapula what is pelvic girdle pelvic girdle is located in the lower part that means in the hip region and this pelvic girdle consists of ilium ischium and pubis this is the diagram of the pelvic girdle it is also called as pelvis this region is called as pelvis and this pelvic girdle is made up of two similar halves what are the two similar halves the two similar halves are known as innominate each half is a complete bone that's known as hip bone so each hip bone is made up of three bones three bones are fused here what are the three bones those are fused one is the ilium one is the ischium one is the pubis so these three bones are fused to form the hip bone and the pelvic girdle is attached to the sacrum what is sacrum it is the sacral vertebrae that is the fused five sacral vertebrae that form the sacrum and at the lower end is present the coccyx so that is the tailbone which is known as the tailbone find out here there is written as acetabulum what is acetabulum this is the cavity and this cavity is important because we can find the attachment of one bone which bone is attached the thigh bone that is the femur bone is attached to this acetabulum now bones of the limbs the limb bones are of two types the fore limb bones and the hind limb bones the bones are the fore limb bones and these bones are the hind limb bones the fore limb bones that form the arm that means it is the hand which is form of humerus radius and ulna carpals metacarpals and phalanges where are these bones located find here the humerus this is the humerus bone so the head of the humerus is attached to the pectoral girdle because there is a cavity and this cavity is known as glenoid cavity so the head of the humerus is attached to the glenoid cavity of the pectoral girdle then there are two bones one is the radius and one is the ulna in the wrist region is the carpals whereas the palm consists of the metacarpals and the fingers consists of the phalanges study this diagram this is the humerus the head of the humerus this is the head of the humerus and the other end of the humerus is attached to 
टू बोन्स वाट आर दि टू बोन्स वन इज द रेडियस वन इज दि अलना हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई विच इज द रेडियस बोन एंड विच इज दि अलना बोन रिमेम्बर द रेडियस बोन इज अलवेज एटाज वेरी क्लोज टू दि थम यू हेव टू आइडेंटिफाई दैट वे देन दि अदर बोन इज दि अलना नाउ वेर आर दि कार्पल्स लोकेटेड दि कार्पल्स आर लोकेटेड इन द रिस्ट रिजन the metacarpals are located in the palm and the phalanges in the fingers this table shows the number of bones in both the arms so both the hands consist of 60 bones that means each hand consist of 30 bones what are the bones humerus which is located in the upper arm that is one in number in one hand radius bone in the forearm region which is one in number in one hand ulna bone located in the forearm region that is also one in number carpals are located in the wrist region which are eight in number metacarpals those are present in the palm region those are five in number in one hand phalanges which are present in the fingers those are 14 in number in one hand so if we consider both the hands left hand and the right hand so togetherly we are getting 60 bones so 30 plus 30 bones now hind limb bones those are present in the leg so the bones which constitute the leg those are femur that is known as the thigh bone the the patella which is present in the knee then two bones the tibia and the fibula which is present in the sank tarsals in the ankle metatarsals in the feet phalanges in the toes find your the bones of the hind limb now look at this diagram we can find here the pelvic girdle so this is the cavity of the pelvic girdle that is known as acetabulum and this is the head of the femur bone so the longest bone of the human body is the femur that is the thigh bone then below the femur is present the patella this is the region of the knee that is made up of one bone that is patella and below the patella we can find here the sank region the sank region contains two bones one is the tibia and the fibula another bone is the fibula how to identify the tibia and the fibula find your as it is shown in the figure the tibia bone is strong it is thick compared to the fibula and the tarsals which are present in the ankle the metatarsals which are present in the feet and the phalanges in the toes this table shows the number of limb bones in both the limbs the left leg and the right leg so all together 60 bones constitute the hind limb bones so femur which is made up of one bone in one leg it is present in the thigh region patella it is located in the knee region it is one in number in one leg tibia which is present in the sank region which is present one in number in one leg like that fibula in the sank region one in number in one leg tarsals are present in the ankle region which are seven in number in one leg metatarsals in the foot so in the sole region those are five in number then phalanges in the toes those are 14 in number so each leg contains 30 bones so two legs contains 30 plus 30 is equal to 60 bones this is the region wise classification of bones and their number in humans region of the skeleton the axial skeleton which consists of the skull 
that is 29 in number vertebral column because they are fused so consist of 26 ribs consist of 24 bones sternum consist of one bone so altogether 80 bones constitute the axial skeleton appendicular skeleton the bones of the limbs Full limb consists of 60 bones, hind limb consists of 60 bones, the girdles, the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle, shoulder girdle is the pectoral girdle that consists of the scapula and the clavicle, those are 4 in number, hip girdles consist of the hip bone, those are 2 in number, so because these are fused, so the bones of the hip, these are fused, so consist of 2 bones, so they are considered as 2 bones only, so altogether there are six bones in the girdles so the total number of bones in human body is 80 plus 60 plus 60 plus 6 so total 206 bones but if we take the number of vertebrae is 33 instead of 26 so the total number of bones come to 213 but if the bones of the sacrum and the bones of the coccyx these are fused that's why the total number of bones in human body is considered as 206 let us know about the holes and cavities located in the skeleton of human being foramen magnum it is a large hole where is it located it is located in the back part of the cranium what is cranium cranium is the part of the skull let us see this is the cranium so at the back part of the cranium at the base of the cranium it is located we can find here this opening is known as foramen magnum and what is the importance of the foramen magnum this is a hole through which the spinal cord continues from the brain into the vertebral canal of the backbone so this is the vertebral column so at the center of the vertebral column there is the neural canal present so through the neural canal passes the spinal cord neural canal so what is neural canal it is a cavity what is the location of neural canal it is present at the center of vertebral column so this is the vertebral column at the back side of the body means in the dorsal part of the body the vertebral column or the backbone continues at the center of the vertebral column the neural canal is present what is the function of the neural canal it houses the spinal cord from the cranium to sacrum what is cranium and what is sacrum cranium is the part of the skull bone means it is the part of the skull uh, sacrum is the last part of the vertebral column it is made up of the sacral vertebrae glenoid cavity it is a cup shaped cavity where is it located it is located on the outer end of scapula what is scapula scapula is the part of the pectoral girdle this is clavicle and Close to the clavicle is present the triangular bone which is known as scapula. So outer edge of the scapula is present the opening the bone. This is the clavicle and this is the scapula. This is the part of the pectoral girdle. So on the outer edge of the pectoral girdle means outer edge of the scapula is present the cavity which is known as glenoid cavity. This glenoid cavity is the cavity where the head of the humerus this is humerus bone so head of the humerus feeds to the glenoid cavity this is the function so head of humerus articulates with this cavity what is acetabulum acetabulum is a cup shaped cavity and it is located in the hip bone so this is the hip bone and this is the opening which is known as acetabulum so the head of the femur bone articulates with this cavity so head of femur articulates with this cavity of the pelvic girdle find in this diagram this is the acetabulum the cavity this is the head of the femur that attaches with this acetabulum Thank you.